Good evening, everybody. 8.15 on Monday, and it's time to get rolling as usual. So we'll wait for a little bit before we get going tonight. Wait for some people to join in as usual, and uh, we will start. We've got some pretty good questions for tonight coming up. And as always, I put up the post up on Facebook during the weekend to uh, pretty much get this going as far as what questions to ask. And that's kind of where it comes from. I used to try to sit back and concentrate and focus on, hey, what can I come up with for everybody to, to chat about that would be interesting? So ever since we started to do this weekend post where you just comment, uh, you know, be the first few to comment, then we can certainly, uh, you know, get going and answer those questions. So tonight, the subjects are going to be introducing a new baby to the family or to the pack, I guess I, you should say, I should say. Um, a new dog, bringing in a new dog into the pack, which is another one. And, you know, I thought this was pretty interesting too. There's a, a, another lady who wrote, uh, <laughs> right on cue, Michelle, uh, reintroducing a dog back into the pack. So, Michelle, if you can hang out for a while, I, I may have some questions for you later on so we can maybe just dig a little deeper into what you have going on because I feel like there's more going on than than uh, what you had said, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely get to that. So, Jocelyn Lamb wrote, uh, bringing in a new baby into the house with dogs. And I have to tell you guys, uh, Jocelyn's been coming to us for a few years, so I'm kind of wondering if this is going to do with her. If it is Jocelyn, congratulations, by the way. If it's not, disregard the congratulations. So I can tell you what I did, you guys, with my dogs, with our kids. Uh, so our oldest, uh, oldest uh, daughter, when she came into this world, I actually brought home one of the times... Uh, one of the blankets that she was all swaddled up in and I remember walking through the front door and my dogs were very interested in that so I would let them sniff and I gave it about three or four seconds and then I made a correction sound and made them back up because I wanted them to learn yay Jocelyn so happy for you guys congratulations wow that's awesome she is prego, you guys. Yay, so cool. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, you guys, I wanted to make sure that my dogs knew that that scent meant space. You have to give it space, no matter what. Because it will boil down to, you know, little <laughs> baby clothing being around, onesies, socks, hats, blankets, toys, um you know, teething things later on, rattles, all that kind of stuff. These are all things that your dogs are not going to be used to. Jocelyn, if you want to start messing around with the rattles and all that kind of stuff now, then go ahead, just randomly shake one, put it right back down, make no big deal about it. We don't need to, you know, desensitize the dogs and or treat them whenever it happens or anything like that. It doesn't have to happen that way. But again, going back to the scent means space now you will see many many a times it's funny my wife showed me a picture yesterday of this baby crawled up you know pretty much asleep leaning up against a, you know a, a dog it some of that makes me emily congratulations you're pregnant too holy cow wow something's in the water <laughs> something makes me very nervous to a degree of having a baby up against a dog like that however you have to know your dog and you have to know that situation I would never suggest hey get your dog really close to the baby and get your baby really close to the dog and see if they'll snuggle like you will not hear me suggest that at all I think that's just borderline ridiculous now Caesar would tell you that his dogs helped raise his kids that's different that's Caesar to me, again, going back to that scent representing space. So when the baby comes home and that baby's starting to make noises and sounds that the dogs have never heard before, we want them to understand, hey, you can sniff from a distance, but you don't need to be in their space at all. You don't need to be two feet away. You don't need to be one foot. You don't need to be inches. You don't need to lick the baby. Nothing. You guys, that stuff makes me nervous. 
I, I don't care if Lassie walked in, the you know, one of the best trained dogs ever, and was sniffing, it would still, it just makes me uneasy. You know, dogs and babies, do, babies are helpless and dogs are fast. They're way faster than us. And I just, I wanna make sure that I take safety first at its peak, no questions, nothing. Because here's the other thing that goes along with that, is that when that baby starts crawling around and crawling towards the dog, uh, this is where stuff can get a little dicey because I want to make sure that the dog moves away from the baby, okay? Because, you know, when the baby starts crawling around, they don't know your words, they don't know what means what, they just see something soft and furry that they might grab a hold of, and it might be a tail and it might be a paw. And this is where the dog might growl, because in their world, they're going to say, hey, if I growl and if I bark or show my teeth, that means this thing's going to move away. Obviously, babies don't know how to do that, so we need to create as much space as we possibly can. This goes back to that initial time and ongoing time of that the baby needs a bubble around it. That's all there is to it. Whether you want to make it a five foot bubble, eight foot, 10 foot bubble, whatever it is. But when that baby starts moving around, it's time for the dog to start moving. So if that baby's you know moving towards the dog and the dog moves, that's great. That's what we're looking for. If the baby you know moves towards the dog and the dog doesn't move, not so good. Again, unless you have the world's best dog. And if you do, great. You can take your own chances at your own leisure and I wish you the best of luck. But you guys, it can't work. To me, it's gotta be safety first, safety second, safety third here. You can't take that chance at all. I, I think you're just playing with fire. Because, look you guys, I've come across dogs that have, have bitten babies that are six months or a year old. And guess what? That completely changes the complexion of how that dog owner sees their own dog. It has to. Wow, my dog just bit my child? Well, I can't trust this dog anymore. But if we backtrack and go, okay, w was this something where the dog and the baby were made to be together? And hey, come sniff the baby because it's a part of our pack and it's so cute and you should do this with it and do that with it and you guys need to hang out next to each other and let the baby crawl all over the dog. Guys, it doesn't work that way. That is not safe to me. It, it isn't. And as a trainer, I think that would be highly irresponsible of me to say, hey, uh, bring the baby in, uh, bring it over to the dog, let the dog sniff it, let the dog's head get down right into the baby seat and sniff and, and you know, all of a sudden, you guys, babies move fast too. Their arms, all of a sudden things move fast. You know, a nice brush across the nose. And I, I mean, I'm telling you, there are just so many variables that can just be in the wrong direction. Everything can go sideways fast. And you don't want that as a parent. You don't want that as a dog owner, nothing. It's just, it's not good. So space. Here's the other thing, when that nursery, when you get that baby moved into the nursery, maybe it's out of your bedroom and, and it's moving into a different room, dogs are not allowed in the nursery, whatever room that is or in that bedroom, period. They're not allowed in. So if you walk in to put the baby in the crib and you hear the dog coming, turn around, tell him out, tell him, you know, whatever you gotta do to get him to go somewhere else, I'm fine with, as long as it's fair. Create that doorway as a threshold. If they wanna stand outside the door and watch, that's fine. But you guys, this is where it comes down to not only, you're bringing a new human being into the house. Do you think a dog needs to be less than a foot away to, to smell that, that baby? No, not at all. The, 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 the dog can probably almost be in another room without a problem whatsoever. It's just one of those things. You, you need to create that space and that association of baby means space. I need to give this space. That's all there is to it. Now, later on, when the kids are old enough to understand dogs and listen and, and take directions from you, then it's different, two or three or four, whatever. As a parent, that's up to you to decide. Then you can start to really get a relationship going between the, the, the kids and the dog. Uh, I mean, it's just gonna take some time and you have to be patient, you guys. Babies don't need to snuggle with dogs and dogs don't need to snuggle with babies. That's all there is to it. One rollover from a dog on top of a baby, 
you're not going to trust your dog again. One nip from the dog of the baby, you're not going to trust your dog again. It's just, it's one of those things. So you guys, you just have to create space as much as possible. So um, Jocelyn, if you need any help when uh, the time comes, when you guys get closer or bringing, in the, bringing uh, the new one home, let me know. I'd be certainly more than happy to, to help you out and reiterate anything here. So feel free anytime. Same thing with you, Emily, too. And congratulations again, you guys. That's that's awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so Linda said how to introduce a new dog to the pack. So I'm going to take this, Linda, as maybe you're bringing your own, you know, you got a new dog and you're bringing that dog into uh, the pack. So to me, them meeting on neutral territory is going to be best, especially if you're getting a rescue dog. If you're getting a puppy, I don't think it's that big of a deal as long as you have well-behaved dogs. If you don't have well-behaved dogs, then again, I would do it in neutral territory. You guys, there is a myth that dogs have to be either come in contact with another dog, with like a physical contact, like they need to sniff, or they need to be nose to nose in order to meet. Like, like that's an official greeting for dogs, which is one of the biggest crocs of you-know-what that there is. And I think this is what gets people into a ton of trouble. A ton of trouble. A good positive interaction can be, you know, a dog owner with their dogs. They kind of come this way, come together, and then they just go for a walk next to each other. And guess what? The dogs have met. Dogs don't shake hands, right? There's no, there doesn't have to be physical contact. They're going to smell each other's scent. Everything has to be triggered with a nose first. You go for a long walk. You turn around. You come back. You finish it. And guess what? You can say your goodbyes and you go your separate ways. Again, if that's if you're, you know, a friend's dog. If this is your own dog, then I would probably say have somebody else in the family meet you somewhere uh, with the new dog while you have your current dog and you go for a walk. Uh, to me, I think that neutral territory should be maybe like a mile from the house or something. Something along those lines where you can walk towards your house, you're going to drain some energy, uh, you know, you might be gone for a half an hour or so, and then when you get back into the house, that new dog goes right into a crate. That dog is not allowed to explore the house. Uh, it's not allowed to go explore all the toys maybe the other dog has, or dog dishes, or anything like that. Just no exploring like drain some of that energy and then the dog goes into a crate that's all there is to it bringing that new dog home you should probably be off of work for at least a day of, or a day or two because it's there's obviously it's going to take some time the other part of this is you have to realize that bringing a new dog into your home it'll take that new dog about 30 days 30 to 45 days for that dog to feel settled in your home. It's proven. I've heard it from trainers I've, ne I've never even spoken to before. It's just an imprint in their brain that says, hmm, I'm going to be here. This is my, whether you want to call it family or pack, it's a conversation for a different day. I'm going to be here. These are the rules, actually, now that I've seen it for a while. Uh, these are the things that they let me do. These are the things that they don't let me do. Uh, we go on our walks. This seems like the, the, the structure that we have here. So, so be it. Now, now I know what's happening. So it's going to take some time. Don't think that it's going to take a week and everything's great and the house training's going wonderful. There's never been any accidents. That's, you guys, that's no different than that honeymoon period for dogs sometimes is we usually get that, wow, it's been... Uh, it's been a week and the, everything's going great with the dog and then about three weeks or a month later it's like hmm we might have to talk to somebody about this because you know the dog isn't um, doing everything it's supposed to do or it's starting to react or something along those lines so you have to create that structure at home all those toys need to be put away again the dog is not allowed to explore the house I'm not a I'm not a believer of that I'm not a fan of that that's like going come on in and take over and you don't know if the dog is up in some random room peeing somewhere or doing anything else or starting to chew. Uh, if you guys want some information, Larry Crone, I believe he even mentioned it on the podcast that I did with him back in the fall. He has some really, really good insight into what to do with a new dog and a new puppy coming home. And I'm going to be taking part in that 
uh, when we get our puppy here in a few weeks. I'm going to be doing the same thing. If that dog is out of the crate, it's either going in the house, it's either going to be on leash, tethered to something, or I'm going to have a hold of that leash. That dog's not going to be allowed to just randomly explore the house at any time and get into things and chew up boots and shoes and hats and whatever else that there is around. I, I think that's ridiculous to to think about uh, letting them do. It's just way too too much freedom. And uh, until that dog can prove to me, which is going, it's going to be at least a year uh, before that dog is loose in the house, before we can just let that let that happen, let that freedom happen. I want things established as much as I can, as much as I can, um, for a while. So, Linda, I hope that gives you some insight into what to do. I would honestly probably keep doing activities with each other, new dog with your current dog, all the time. Walks together, play together, feed together. Now, if you're getting a rescue, you guys, and it's feeding time, I would probably tether that dog to something to feed it to where it's not, it cannot access your current dog's food at all. Big, that could be a huge problem and you don't want to get into that. So to me, I'm, I want to start with them, I don't know, 20 feet apart, 30 feet apart, and then work our way in if everything's kosher for a long, long time. Uh, so we don't want to take food aggression to a very uncomfortable place. Uh, and again, with rescues, sometimes you just don't know. Even though that paperwork may say everything's good, um, it may be everything, and maybe everything is good, but it, we have no history of what your dog is going to be like with a new dog or what that new dog is going to be like with your dog. So instead of taking any chances, uh, I, I would rather not I would rather not take any chances. That's all there is that's all there is to it. So uh, All right, so Michelle, you are up. Uh, Michelle Mingo here. So your question was something to do with reintroducing a dog back into the pack if they've left for a little while. Because there might be some issues when they roll back in. And I feel like that's kind of an, uh, I feel like there's other stuff going on. Because to me, and this is just my first instinctual thought to go along with that, was if a dog is left for a little while and comes back and there tends to be issues, I would probably tend to guess or wager that there's probably some underlying issues going on currently, uh, even with them together. So it's one of those things, Michelle. I'd love to kind of hear your insight into what that looks like when you bring a dog back in after being gone for a little while. So uh, Jocelyn, thanks for the info. The scent thing makes perfect sense. Same with the nursery, being a dog-free space, all things I never would have thought of. Yeah. Jocelyn, I can't tell you how many people uh, probably come to me. I bet you we had at least five or six people last year, five or six clients come to me last year and say, "Hey, we're getting, we're having a new, you know, a baby. What should we do?" It is a big time. It, it really is. You know, that baby is going to be making noises that your dogs have never heard of. I can remember my dog, my dog Maddie. You know, when my uh, our first child was making all sorts of noises and her ears were up and she kind of moved back and forth and um, Maddie's um, I think instinct when something goes on that she's unsure of she might sniff a little bit she's not going to be the curious one that just just kind of barges in and says hey what's going on over here she's gonna kind of hang back she gets spooked a little bit she's out like she she tends to be flighty in that sense so you know, every dog is different. And if you guys watched, actually today was a really great example, the live feed I did with the, the training dogs this morning. And we had, uh, Serena was walking up close with uh, Acadia, the husky, coming back from a walk. And there's front of the pack, middle of the pack, back of the pack type dogs. And that's really, uh, that was really a great example of, of how that works. And you guys can see that. So, you know, depending on what your dogs do, Jocelyn, you may have one that's a little more curious and a little more forward, and one that may hang back, hangs back. Or, but either way, you will you will get you know, you will get something different probably out of them out of them than what you expect. So it and yes, it will be completely different for them. That is for sure. So, uh, 
well, I don't see anything from Michelle, so I, unfortunately I don't know. I'd love to be able to get into this to help her out a little bit, but uh, I don't see any any comments uh, about uh, what's going on with maybe some possibly underlying issues. So, uh, Anyways, you guys, so that's what's going on there. So we had some really good questions there. I'm going to scroll back through to see if there's anything that I missed. Uh, Heather says, hey, Heather. Saw the wave, nice. And again, Emily and Jocelyn, congratulations. That is awesome, awesome stuff. Hey, Renee. Uh, Michelle, you're welcome for the info anytime, you guys. You guys, you can always message me, okay? Always message me if you need a, you know, if you have a quick question. Um, you know, if you get anything, if you get really deep questions, I may tell you, hey, there's a lot to do with this. I, you know, I might need video to see what's going on. But you guys, I'm out here to help. Obviously, I'm doing this, right? I mean, way out here to help. Uh, oh, so Linda, you're looking to get one down the road. Good. Well, you're doing the right thing. You're doing your you know, research now. You're finding out what questions to ask and what the best thing to do is at, you know, for that time. So I can tell you guys we're getting our puppy in probably a little less than three weeks. And that's my plan when we get that puppy. We're going to go for a walk. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple little experiments with it on some recall as soon as we get home. I know it sounds crazy, recall for a puppy at eight weeks, but uh, I was told by an old school trainer a technique to use and I'm going to use it and see what happens. That's for sure. Uh, but that's my plan. We're gonna go for a walk with that puppy when we get home. And when we get home, that puppy is going to go right into a crate for probably an hour or two. Um, Jocelyn, we are getting a greater Swiss mountain dog. That is the plan. Uh, we actually went to look at the litter this past weekend, and uh, I think we're probably going to be getting one of the girls that they have. That's the that's the plan right now. So it should be should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. On top of that, you guys, I'm going to be documenting a lot of this stuff too with the puppy, because I want everybody to see that we as dog trainers go through the same thing as everybody else. Uh, it may be handled differently. It may be handled the same. I may find something that uh, that I have for a technique up my sleeve that doesn't work. Uh, and my goal is to try to you know video as much of that as possible for you guys, uh, so you can see how you know I would handle it, what I would do, and I'm I'm going to put that dog on a routine of you know probably out for anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes, and it could be play, it could be a walk. Although a 30 minute walk for an eight week old puppy is way long. Uh, you know, some socializing time at work with the other dogs with a good group. So, you know, but every time after that dog does something, depending on the intensity of it, you know, 10 to 30 minutes, uh, that dog is going to go back into a crate in my office for probably at least a couple of hours. And that will really determine that dog's, the puppy's schedule of, out for a little while and now it's time to rest for a while out for a little bit rest for a while out for a little bit rest for a while it's just one of those things so uh michelle good i think it's the way we are bringing the dog back in i think we set them up and that very well could be you know a lot of excitement can cause that problem a lot of excitement and i've seen that you know when dogs get too too excited even if they're happy to see each other they just start just kind of bickering at each other and it can be a little bit much sometimes i i would probably focus on you know if there's a dog that's a little too hyper whether it's the dog that's at home or the dog that you're bringing in i think i would chill that dog out before i'd even reintroduce them that's for sure uh linda says when we got pj he was 16 months and we had a 14 year old aggressive shepherd we had them meet down the street walk up together pj followed nico onto the property and followed him into the house they did really well Nico snapped at PJ a few times to set boundaries, but did well. <clears throat> and you guys, I, to me, look, obviously my situation is very different. I've got a daycare, you know, available to me for socializing. I've got other dogs, you know, the whole thing. I've got kids that are going to probably entertain this dog. So it's, it's, it's very different. Uh, but I, I'm certainly going to be using all those tools to my advantage where, you know, I've got old dogs that I want to be able to pass on their legacy because I think they're just socially, I think they're masterful at what they do. Uh, you know, so that's going to be passed on. 
Now, as two 11-year-olds, are they going to play with an eight-year-old or eight-week-old? I don't know. If they are, it's not going to be as intense as what, what the puppy does with its siblings. But it'll still be, you know, possibly some play. So we'll see. I don't know. I, I can't answer that. I can't, <laughs> I can't predict what an 11-year-old dog is going to do with an eight-week-old dog. But the other aspect, like I said, is I've got other dogs at work, obviously, that we'll be introducing this dog to. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, this dog, probably at a year, year and a half old, will have some serious skills to start out with, just being around dogs every day. The other experiment I'm going to do, and you guys have heard me talk about this and almost to the point of preaching, is uh, I'm not going to teach this puppy how to sit. That dog is not going to have the word sit in its vocabulary. Uh, and that's just strictly my experiment. I'm just curious as to, because I want to see when that dog sits and why. I, I am so curious as to why dogs do that. I mean, obviously at this age, they're not being taught sit or anything like that. I'm just very curious as to what it will, what it will bring. I, I know um, one trainer that I've spoken to that's, been doing this a very very long time who said that his dogs don't even know what sick means and to me that was just some validation for what I've been kind of saying for for quite some time is I I, I don't know I, I was telling Serena and Matt today I've got this well you guys know George the dog that I've been working with the really scared lab guy so today I've been working on his impulse control you know just being in uh, uh, up on a raised bed a little bit you know a couple inches and him staying there while I moved around. And he actually, standing up, he seemed very unsure as to what he should do. Not unsure in his personality or scared, just unsure as, because I wasn't giving him the guidance to be like, hey, go over there, sit, stay, you know, lie down. Uh, it was more uh, giving him a little bit to think about of, hey, how is he going to problem solve out of this? He's got to realize that he's got to stay there. The hard part about George is that any move that I make towards him, even with like body language or a correction sound, can make him get scared of me again. And I, I can't break his trust that way. Uh, so for him, this was probably the first time, I'm guessing since like probably September or October of last year, that I actually told a dog to sit on that bed. Uh, and when I did, I think it helped him settle down a little bit. It didn't change his state of mind, right? And we always talk about that. But I think it made him feel more comfortable because he was told what to do. You know, a dog that's so scared, so nervous, once that relationship is established, I think it's good for him to get that direction. Once he sat, he was better. Plus, I could read him a little bit better as to when he was going to try to get up and get back off of the bed. But that was it. And then moving back in and giving him some massage work, then he just started to melt. I mean, his face got so soft. It was, uh, it was pretty crazy. But, he, you know, he did, he did really well with it. But that's the first time, the first dog in probably nine months that I've actually told Sit. Because it was going to help me out a little bit with reading him. And, you know, just giving him that little bit of guidance. So eventually to me... Once he gets used to me making correction sounds or that type of thing or using my body language, I think he'll get more comfortable with it and then I'm not going to have to do it anymore. So that's, that's pretty much my goal with that guy. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things. And so again, going back to it, I'm not going to teach the new puppy how to sit. I'm not. It's going to give me some really, really, really valuable information as to when she does sit, why. What is she doing? And that's what I'm so curious about and I can't wait to see. So again, you guys, so uh, I'm going to leave you with this thought. I, the shadow program that I've got coming up in a few weeks, I've had a ton of interest in in the last few weeks. So if it's something that you want to do, please let me know uh, sooner than later so we can squeeze you in. We've got a few spots left. Uh, our socials should be starting up, I'm hoping, uh, Wednesday, May 30th. Uh, if you are one of our clients and you want to get into that, again, we'll be announcing it on Facebook, uh, probably our website, and possibly a newsletter too. We haven't sent out, we don't send out a ton of newsletters. I don't want to flood people's uh, inboxes with that kind of stuff. So, uh, but we will be letting you know one way or the other. And it looks like I'll be doing a workshop 
uh, this summer in New Hampshire, probably a one day workshop uh, with Paula Bergeron from Good Dogma uh, Dog Training. So we got some fun stuff going on this summer. Uh, I'm pretty excited, a lot of fun stuff. And it was, it's just, it's nice to get this weather out and do a lot more uh, activities outside. As you can see from all of our live feeds that we did last week, uh, we were outside quite a bit and it's fun because it's draining the dogs and it's it's really fulfilling them and it's been it's been great so uh you guys i hope you stick with me for all the content that i'm I, i'm putting out i'm really enjoying doing this uh you'll see some new stuff on our youtube channel vermont dog trainer there's some dog trainer daily stuff it's really actually kind of cool i never uh would figure that you know, I've been numbering all the episodes that I've been putting on YouTube and I've actually been starting to use those episodes as references for some people. So I, you know, whether they want to know more about e-collar, whether they want to know about place command or body language, I can say, hey, check out episode uh, 52 and that will give you a perfect example of what you're looking for. So it's been pretty, pretty awesome stuff. So, um, Patricia, I'm not 100% sure. Just look up Paula Bergeron. Uh, dog trainer in New Hampshire should give you I can't I can't remember the town that she's in it, it's out of my head at the moment but uh, just check that out we're, we're looking possibly in July it might be a one-day thing on socializing uh, from my aspect and then training from from Paula's as far as like one-on-one -on -one or even you know well she'll she'll do her thing she's and she's a great trainer She'll do her thing. I'm going to do my thing. We're going to come together. We're going to have a great time. So it should be a lot of fun. But you guys, I'm going to call it uh, a night here. I've been chatting pretty solid. And uh, we'll keep you posted on George, you guys. Hopefully you're following his story. He's uh, making some some pretty good progress. And he's been fun to work with. He's 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 been a blast. He's gone from this scared dog to, now nah, i got to start chilling him out. Because he's just getting so wound up and so excited. i got to... I gotta put a cap on that for him so he just doesn't get too out of control. And uh, Ridley goes home tomorrow, or I don't know, this week, Ridley the Great Dane, and we've got uh, Rowan as well, the new fee, so. And a new dog coming in tomorrow. So lots of good stuff, a lot happening uh, in our world, that's for sure. So you guys have a great night. We will see you next week during this, every Monday at 8.15, and I'm sure I will see you again during the week during our live streams. So you guys have a wonderful Monday night, and we'll see you soon.